welcome to a how to dye yarn video. Today we're going to dye yarn and make solids. So I thought I'd share with you guys how I make my solids. Um, there's quite a few other ways to make it, but this method I find the easiest for me and the most comfortable. So for me before I did pan dyeing solids, I originally um, did crock pot solids and that for me was a little difficult until I got these guys and um, and then it became much easier for me to make solids. So what I usually do is I put as much water as I am comfortable with. Um, basically I want the skein submerged in water and then have some more room. And then from there I like to heat the water up, keep it to a low simmer, and um, start from there. Um, so for to, be, to start, um, I highly recommend pre-soaking your skein for like 25 minutes or as long as it's completely drenched. Um, and also add either um, white distilled vinegar or citric acid. One or the other, that's what I do. So for me, for the dye, I am going to add teal green. This is a Dharma dye. And the teal green uh, is already pre-mixed with a certain amount of concentration. So I'm going to add um, that to the, to the pan. For you guys, you can either mix it up whatever way you want without any color, or you can just add dye speckles or dye powder in general in it. As long as you have it mixed up, there's no like little um, dye powder chilling. Um, as long as you have it mixed up, you're pretty good to go. And as long as you follow these steps, you should have a pretty good solid skein. It might be variegated in some spots, and that's depending on how um, the yarn is set. So. The other thing to get started is, for me, I don't like um, too much dye on my hands. The only thing I accept is getting dye on my feet because how the way I dye yarn, yarn splashes everywhere and it always gets on my feet. So for, for me, I always wear latex gloves and then I actually have to wear sleeves for my arms. I get a bad reaction. I'm not sure what it was. At first I thought it was the vinegar. Um, and then when I replaced the vinegar with the citric acid, I still got a really bad like reaction where I would get hives or I would break out in a rash. And I'm not sure what it is. I'm, I'm, a part of me thinks it's due to um, heat with dye and it's just not working well with my skin. It doesn't like it. So, But if you don't have that issue, latex gloves, this is fine. This is just good enough. The other one, the other thing I do is I, I use a syringe. For my dye. Since it's already pre-mixed, I put a certain amount in the syringe and then I put it, put it in the pan. Now there's other ways you can do it that's completely up to you. So let's get into the step of dyeing your solids. I'm going to show you how to pan dye one and then if you ever have minis and you want to specifically dye one mini or two, I will show you how I dye my minis downstairs in my crock pots. So I add the dye first. And I, I added first before adding the, the fiber just because if you add the fiber first you're going to get a huge variegation because whatever that dye hits first is going to latch on it and you're going to have darker colors and more spots. And if you want to do that by all means go ahead to do the first method of placing the yarn in there first and then dumping the dye in. Um, so yeah, so I mix this guy up first. So for this guy, I do about 10 mLs on there, or 2 TSBs, and I go all the way up to the top, and then I just put it, and I kind of clean out the syringe to where it's clear, so that there's no dye left in it, so that all the dye that I want, it goes right in there. So typically what I try to do is I try to mix it up either with the, with um, with a fork or this guy and I just mix the dye around make sure it spreads all the way in the, in the pan um, I typically I have the heat on now so I have it at a good uh, get into a good simmer and usually I have it on low so it gets the water hot and it keeps it a good temperature so the dye, um, so the yarn I will be using is Aiden Socks, which is 100% superwash merino wool. For those who are fairly new to dyeing solids and are scared to get their uh, skeins mixed up, I always recommend a cotton string 
is one of the videos I watched uh, when I was learning how to first die. I always put this on all my skeins, but after dying so much, I kind of got comfortable to know where and when to pick up the skein. So, only reason why I have this on here is because I have Addy socks downstairs, which are Superwash Merino and Nylon Blend. So, this helps me determine that this is Aiden socks and, and not the um, Addy. So what I do, again, um, I kind of loosen up the slip knots to make sure the dye can get in there in those spots too because typically it's it's really hard to get a, a good pure solid in there um, a lot of times just mainly because the slip knots like to hold it and then the sides like to um, the yarn likes to hold on to the sides and then and it blocks actually some of the condensedness so I'm just gonna drop it in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my spatula, or you can do your hands. The water isn't too hot for me to use my hand um, to use my hands to spread around. So what I do is I try to open up this the skein and to make sure it's going to grab all of it and not leave anything out. So it might look like it's light in some parts. It's because the skein is it's, it's because the skein is rising up. Should've. Sorry about my phone. So, um, I do that. So typically what I do is I, I let it sit for 30 minutes. Um, but halfway through, I, um, I check on it and I stir it up a little bit just to get any other spots that have been missed. A lot of times it's, it turns into a solid. There might be some light spots, um, but no one's perfect. And that's, I always do a disclaimer on my solids that I try my best to make it a solid, especially the thicker weights. Thicker weights um, are more variegated because it has so much bulkiness to it. Um, but yeah, and if and if I'm if if I have really busy days to where I have a hard time checking on it in 15 minutes, um, it's still a case. To where it's at now, it's still open a lot. To where it's still gonna grab everything. So we're gonna give this a little bit, and I'll come back to you when it's done. It's been about 15 minutes in. I'm gonna go and check on the die. So if you look you can still see that there's still color in the water and that's fine. 15 minutes in you should still have that. And if you don't that means it exhausted really really quick which is it could be a good thing too. Depends on the dye, depends on the color because each one can either exhaust quickly or take a little bit. So I'm gonna swoosh it around a little bit more. Looks like it's being distributed pretty decently. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to let this sit for another 15 minutes. Give it my 30. So typically what I do now is um, after it's full, after the time runs out, I'm going to set it outside, let it, let it cool to room temperature to where I could pick it up, rinse it out. Um, and I'll let it out, hang out to dry. So I'll see you in another 15 minutes. All right, and this is how to, um, how I dye my minis if I'm making them like, you know, maybe one at a time if I'm doing a set. Um, typically for minis, I'll dye them in the pan. Um, if I make five, about a total of five minis. But with one, I usually stick to a crock pot because of the size. So I have my little recipe here and telling me what I need to add. So I'm going to mix my dye stock a little bit and add the necessary ingredients for it. So I'm just mixing it in. I'm cleaning my syringe. So I typically try to loosen where the slip knots are because even dyeing solids, that is probably the hardest part for me to make sure everything's solid. Um, when you're dyeing yarn, it's you know it's not always going to be perfect, and a lot of times the customers understand it's not always going to have those solid parts in there. So um, so yeah, so like I said, I always open these up, and what I do is I just drop it in. I don't have a little knot or anything on there to. Make sure it doesn't get tangled. 
I've done this so much to the point that, you know, I, I know what to grab, where to grab, and if it does seem a little messy, I typically just grab a, a slip knot apart and then just separate it. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually swishing it around just to kind of open it up just to make sure the dye gets into the skein. Um, it gets all of it and I'm not um, blocking anything to variegate it to too much. Um, so that's basically what I do for minis and then I spread it around. I kind of mess with it just a little bit. There are certain dyes um, that I let the skein sit in for a while. Um, typically a lot of times um, it's like the purples and the reds sometimes it takes a little bit longer to dissolve so I just let it sit a little bit and then mess with it every few minutes so just by doing this just by swiveling around I'm gonna check I'm gonna check my thing and if you can see it's it has some, a little hint of green in there but for the most part it is exhausted and this is my little cup that I test the water see how clear or um, how exhausted the water is before I can take the colors, take the skein out, um, or whether or not um, it needs to stay in a little bit longer. say that's it's pretty exhausted it's pretty good that's the best that I can get so now I'm gonna grab these bad boys and these guys are a lifesaver they help me pick out yarn and the hot hotness of the hot of um, the water I just pick it up I squish it and I always like to make sure these guys are clean. Sometimes dye will be residued on there, but a lot of times after my dye days, I clean it. Um, very rarely does dye ever stay on here. So. so I took the liberty of taking it outside once the timer went off. As you can see, you can see that the water still holds some dye. That's why I always leave it outside for a little bit longer, even with the sun on it. Because once it cools down, it's still given more time for that dye to exhaust into the skein. It's the same thing when I make anything pan dyeing. This is Lisa. This is Carnival Chaos. This has some reds that typically like to stay, and that's due to the way the dye powder is for the red. And most of the time, I have to give it a little bit longer to cool so that the so it can exhaust. Probably regardless, I, I still have to wash it. Um, that's basically it. I'll give you another 15 minutes and see how exhausted this guy is. With my little trusty assistant. So it looks like it's been pretty much a solid. I don't see any spots of um, lights. Um, um, might be one or two little bits, but for the most part it's almost a solid skein. So now I'm going to hang it up with the other guys here and dry them out. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned a lot about how to dye solids. Um, there's a few other ways to dye solids. Um, originally before I got the pans, I used to dye through crock pots with the actual full skein. Um, but I've learned that it, you have to really constantly move it around a lot more than uh, messing with it on, on the pan on the stove. Um, so if you ever can't really get the pans right away and you really want to do solids, um, you can do crock potting as well. Like I said, I just highly recommend um, that you move it around a lot. They constantly bicker with it until you see that the water is exhausted. Okay? Alright, thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you in the next how-to dye video.